Skylar and Liam Frontiers, thanks for allowing us, John and I, to have this discussion. And John, welcome. Thanks for joining us. John's the um, president of New Hampshire Industries, and I met John about two or three years ago. I won't go through a long introduction, except to say that what really impresses me about John is a, is a couple of things, and probably the main thing is that he understands that the behaviours he sees in his, uh, the people in his organisation are a reflection of his own, and, um, and I think he conducts himself uh, with that in mind all the time, which is, which is terrific. So as a, just as a quick introduction, uh, about a year ago or a bit over, I uh, um, had a discussion with Mark Rosenthal where we were talking about the scientific thinking and the Toyota Way as a system, which comes from the Toyota Way second edition too. Now, just after that, I had a, um, a discussion with John about this. And in, our, in the email discussion, John, you said this, and I'll just read it if you don't mind. The model, this one in front, represents how a very large organization is built and around what they believe, where mine is more of a tactical overview of how a leader should practice to be successful using TWI and the improvement and the coaching carter. So can you just go into that comment that you made there and, uh, and give us some background on that, please, John? Sure, Oscar. Um, so I read that book, um, the first edition of that book, and when I, you had shown me the new, um, you know, the, the 2.0 version, um, I saw that as a, a much larger, you know, thing as an organization like Toyota needs to operate. What we were working on here after, after working on the Kata training with you years ago, we started to try to implement it at a tactical level um, and apply the pattern of the improvement Kata and coaching Kata, but we, you know, I, I had told you in the past, I've tried to apply tools before to the to the team. I try to teach them value stream mapping and all the different uh, lean tools that everybody else does um, and tries. And what I found was, you know, we, you know, once we started doing the improvement kata and the coaching kata that we could pull the tools in as we need them to grow. And I thought, but I still think you need some structure around that when you're growing people and leaders in your company to make sure that those areas of competence kind of fill in around that. You don't need to necessarily do, you know, job instruction first, or, or you, you can pull that in as you need it where the, where the need is. Um, and I built that model um, that I shared with you that I, I can pull up. Um, yeah, if you could, if you can show us that model, that would be terrific. A couple of, uh, there was a question in from David Usana, uh, Asuna, who, uh, particularly asked to see the model that you're about to show us all. Okay. Yeah, let me, um, I'm not really great with Zoom here, hold on. I don't know, Oscar, if you could pull it up. I, I'm, I don't know I'm how to share, share the screen here. Share screen, have you got share screen down the bottom in the green? I do, but I can't see the picture. Hold on. So I guess I'll put it there and then you can tell me if, Yep, that's a good start. All right. <clears throat> Perfect. Well done. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm used to teams. So that's right. um, so the, the one thing that I that I uh, chose to do differently was put uh, people in the middle, which is the job relations kind of the pattern there, but more so because uh, it's really the focus should be there, at least in my view, that we need to grow the, you know, you get your results through your team and the leaders should be really focused on their people first. And then the other um, competencies kind of support that. And on the outside, you've got the coaching to provide the momentum, you know, in, in all those different patterns, you know, and all those different efforts. So that was really the, this is, and I, I stole a little bit of this from, I think I'm, it's not all my, any of you know, my ideas alone, I think I've morphed this by, there's a book called The Seven Kata, then I had the training with you, and then the, also the Toyota Way. So I think it morphed into this to be, create a tactical model for our leaders to see, you know, what are the, the, the things that I should be focused on in one, on one page that it can keep them, keep them focused and um, driven toward. Um, so you, you use this to help communicate, um, to help communicate to your leaders what was in your mind and how you are going to see them progress. Is that right? Correct. 
Yeah, yeah, good. So can you just explain the model in a little bit more detail? And someone's popped up with a question of what's Carter. So good question. Very, very quickly. It's it's a um, it, a Carter is a pattern you practice to develop a skill. But in this particular case, John's referring to the Toyota Carter patterns, which is an improvement pattern and a coaching pattern. Just very, very, very briefly. So John, can you just explain you know, the, the, this diagram in a little bit more detail? this model? Yeah, sure. So um, the job relations um, tool, the TWI job relations, um, I'll call it caught up just because it's one of the one of the patterns that you follow as a leader, uh, focuses on getting results through your people. And, you know, and understanding issues that pop up, how do you deal with them? It's it's just one of the patterns to um, smooth, better, create better communication and a smooth the, the uh, effort from a leader to their their people and get results through that effort. And I so I started there in the center. And then the other things are really just support, right? To protect your people, you have the safety aspect. You have the job instruction is, you know, clearly training uh, in a in a, a repeatable, very um, um, show, tell, and then, you know, let them show you back and explain the reason why you do things. And then obviously problem solving speaks for itself. Um, job methods is really more the incremental improvement piece, but then there's the improvement kata, which is the continuous improvement piece. So that kind of really in every aspect of what a leader needs to do, that's what the day-to-day -day they, they need to do tactically. And then the coaching piece is how they develop their people. So I view that as kind of the thing that ties it all together. And that provides momentum for their, them to grow their team and their leaders under them um, or that, that work with them. So that was my logic. Um, and, and it was easy to share this visually with people and leave them with this versus, you know, try to explain it on a 10 page uh, PowerPoint. Yeah. And tell us a bit more about the logic of your logic of having the job relations one right in the middle. Uh, that I guess that for me in manufacturing, we, we it's we're uh, at least here at NHI and I'm people centric. So really focusing on people first, that's the real um, that's 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 the one asset of a company that's that will continue to develop and grow in value versus, you know, machines and buildings and all that will all depreciate. But focusing on people first, you'll get a lot more um growth and value out of that uh, i don't want to call people an asset that's not the right the right term but um you know that's a, a valuable piece of your organization so you should focus on that first that's how you deliver to your customers to your owners to your you know all the shareholders and stakeholders is focusing on your people first spot on now does this model in your mind is this model sit only at one level of the organization in other words at the frontline leader level and the frontline leaders are the coaches or or does it sit at, you know, where do you see this model sitting and functioning for want of a better question? Better word. Uh, I think it cascades from the, from the top all the way down. If, I mean, if you, if you're a senior leader, I think it's the same, I think it's the same model. It might be at a different level in the organization or a different level of detail, but I don't think the model changes at all. It just, I think it gets more granular as you get closer to the work. Yeah, right. -o. So where it says coaching around the outside, um, that might be you with your leaders. It might be those leaders with their subordinates and so on and so forth. Is that what you're exactly. saying? Exactly. Exactly. So with that in mind, then uh, does with the and I know you your you know COVID's thrown a spanner in the works as it does with all of us. But with that in mind, when you get onto the job relations training, is that going to be at one level of the organisation or at multiple levels? What's your plan on that? So the plan would be um, at the initially at the um, at the front line level, just because they have a lot more uh, touch points with the people. Um, but then carrying it on with the with the senior uh, all the way up to the senior team as well. But it's we'll, it will be in multiple installments, and I think we'll get the biggest bang for our buck in developing the front line leaders because you know they have far more touch points with um, the greater number of our team. Yeah, sure. Okay. So just, and then now we've sort of covered the what, but if you can just tell us a little bit about the why, why did you feel it was important to, to have some sort of a framework like this, some sort of a model, whether it be this one or, or, or another version of something 
like what I showed at the start. But either way, why was it important in your mind to have this model? What was the point of it? What sort of triggered in your mind we need to have something like this? Well, I think mainly what triggered me to put it together was to get my mind right about how we need to develop leaders at each at every level in the company. Um, I think I shared on another webinar with you, Oscar, and I know I have in conversations. I thought when I took over as president, I could just by sheer force create the, a lean organization and push it down through and, you know, because I, I would have all that authority. It didn't work that way. And I think obviously people change at different rates. So having some structure to kind of guide people as they, you know, as they develop as leaders was important. And I love the all the TWI patterns and the and the the improvement kata and coaching kata. Um, and I I just wanted to show people how they fit together because I think there's a, there was a little confusion both in my mind and and my leadership team's mind on kind of how does this how how do you put a model together to to kind of guide the development of leaders at every level instead of having to have me be the the momentum builder behind everything because I can't and, and everything comes across um, as an order or demand for me as the president versus this just kind of naturally saying this is what you know, you can do this on your own. You could go read about each of these and learn how to develop. You could apply the improvement kata yourself and pull these things in when you need them and help you develop as a leader. You don't need anything but the model and the tools and your own desire to kind of do it. But why I built it was more to get my mind right about how do we want leaders to act and behave and, and guide and get results through their team and their people with people at the center. So I wanted to make sure that was evident. Yeah, okay, good. Would it be fair to say that it's really, in some respects, it's a it's a, it's a vision. It's where you would like, you know, I, what I understand you to be saying is in X years, and it's not going to be tomorrow, that you'd like people to have the capabilities in those areas depicted on that model. And you, is that, is that really what, it's almost like a vision. Is that, would that be a fair comment? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's that, that's the, when every, you know, if you were to be a leader at any level in this company, or, you know, I, I would view this probably as uh, it would work anywhere, but um, if you did all of these things well, and you developed all these competences, um, competencies, uh, well, you're going to perform the way that I believe a leader should in our company, you know, with people at the center, with all these um, tools and focus areas, and it, you could take it anywhere. Um, so we want it to be a win-win, but it is a vision of, of what every leader and how every leader should be uh, functioning when they're, and obviously it's all a continuum. Nobody's going to ever be done developing, but. No, no, so. no. And you're always going to have new people coming in, I suppose, new frontline leaders and stuff. Yeah, correct. And um, when you <clears throat> developed and then you communicated, was there any pushback? I, there was more pushback before I built, uh, developed this model. There is still some pushback, but less than what I got before. When I was trying to share let, uh, leaders at every level, I did it before I built this model. I just I told people, hey, we're going to have leaders at every level. We're going to, you know, we're going to empower people to have uh, move decision making down, you know, closer to the work or closer to the area where decisions should be made. There was a lot more pushback there because it wasn't, I think it was too vague. I think I, I was too vague and I wasn't um, providing a clear picture for people of what that what that looked like. Look, we're gonna give you and develop these tools and competencies for you and with you so that you're ready to do that. And there was less pushback, I think, when I shared this model, but okay. it was after, so, so like after oh, sorry, go ahead. That's right. Patrick's just asked the question, Patrick Krause. He said, what did that pushback look like or what type of pushback? So when you were getting pushback on development of people and what, how did that manifest itself? What, what uh, it uh, like? I guess a couple of, I, there were several different ways. Um, some of it was very hard to, it was passive aggressive a little bit. So you couldn't pick, you'd had to, you just knew you felt it uh, more than, more than heard it. Um, but some people directly said, you know, that, um, you know, that, I don't think I can do this. It wasn't as much that they didn't want to try or it, I, I think there's just more apprehension that, yeah, I don't view myself as a leader. So therefore I don't think I can do that. That's why I think maybe with the picture 
the, this model, it made it a little more visible to them and they're, oh, well, I kind of, I kind of understand it a little more, but the pushback was, that was really more palpable was more the passive aggressive. That's not my job or I don't, I don't need to worry about that. I've done this before. Yeah, right. I've been a leader before. Um, and, you know, that's more what I've seen. Okay. And Kate Swans just asked a question. Now, how did you handle that? And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way you handled that was, you know, getting something that was in your head out onto something that was almost tangible, i.e. what we see in front, and then putting that forward to the staff, and that made it easier to communicate where you were expecting them to be. Is that, is that a fair comment? That is fair, yeah. Yeah. So when you consider job relations and those who are participating, you know, you would have been familiar with the foundations of job relations. You're telling people in advance of something that's going to affect them. Right. Would that be a fair comment? You're, yes. You're, you know, you're yes. giving people time to chew it over and you're going to help them get there. And so it's really, I see this as really communicating one of those foundations. Absolutely. And I think, it, I know you, I don't know you that well, but I know you reasonably well. I think probably one of the important things you might want to comment on this, I don't, did you tell them how you were going to get there? Uh, or were you saying, well, we're going to find our way, but this is where we'll end up? I definitely, the, 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 the latter of that, I, I would not tell them I know the way because I think I started that way with the tools and with the, here's how we're going to do this. And that was a, a I won't say it was an utter failure, but it stalled um, to the to the point of uh, I pulled the plug. And, and luckily, I was reading the book, as I told you, Oscar, the Toyota Kata book at that time. And I had the epiphany that, well, I, they can pull the they can determine the how I just need to I need to paint the clear picture for them of where where they need to try to go and then work with them, coaching them or coaching their leaders so they can be coached, you know, to develop as well. So sure. So, so with that in mind, would it be fair to say uh, that, that you're almost imply, uh, applying scientific thinking to the development of people? This is the challenge, if you like, maybe not a vision. This is, this is the challenge is there. We're going yeah. to be there and we need to be there in three years time and four years time or whatever. And probably COVID's thrown that a little bit. But would it be fair to say that that's where you're heading and um, you have a current condition? I'm going to ask you a question on that at the moment. First, you know, you, we, you've started work with us, I know, on the improvement carter, coaching carter, and then you're getting into job relations. So that's sort of your conditions that you're targeting, building those skills. Yeah. Would it be fair to say, I think it would be reasonable to say that you're applying scientific thinking to the development of people. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, trying to trying to paint a picture of what what the leader of tomorrow will look like is really the challenge you know you know helping develop those leaders of tomorrow is the is the picture of you know um of when you get out of that vehicle in five years you talk to me oscar about the delorean right if you get out of that car and you yeah. look yeah that's what we want people and how how the leaders need to be behaving and then you know our current condition is the gap between these competencies and what they you know what they have and you know what they don't so you need to start to develop that so sure and when you look at it that you know, those words plan do check act around the outside really apply to this don't they you're going you know, to plan to do job relations training um you do it you see what the reaction is and then you might need to make some adjustments or act and around we go and yep yeah yes makes great sense um so what is the current condition as a matter of interest with this model where do you think you're at at the moment so uh, one of the key leaders that has, um, he's the um, manufacturing leader um, who took, he took the, the Toyota Kata training. I tried to develop him myself because he's my, he was my direct report. And I tried to push the improvement Kata and the coaching Kata with him. And it didn't go as well as when we set him, you know, to, to the training um, through, um, you know, the formal training. He's, he's taken off with the coaching portion of it. And now I've seen that spread, you know, so the improvement cot is being practiced. And now they're almost pulling in pieces of job relations, pieces of job instruction, you know, things that they need that they're that to address the obstacles that they're finding. So they're our current condition is, you know, some people have the coaching cot and they're doing well, they're developing as coaches. We have a 
more people doing improvement kata. We have fewer people doing uh, job relations um, only because of COVID. That was supposed to already be in the works, but that's um, later this summer or the fall. Um, but pieces of it are, are, are clearing up. You can see the picture, the leaders that are developing, they're pulling in areas of, of any one of those patterns to, you know, to develop where they need to, which is what I love about the improvement kata. You pull in what you need to address the obstacles that are in your way, you know, preventing you from getting to your challenge. So, yeah. So what I understand you to be saying there is that um, as time develops, as thing, as time goes on, if you apply this model and build capability around that, then in three years time, say the, the frontline leaders are going to have the, they're going to have 80 to 90% of the skills that they need to face the day-to-day -day problems that appear in any workplace. Is that, that, I understand that's what you're saying. Yeah. And they'll also be able to take on bigger and bigger challenges, you know, as they refine yeah. and, and develop the competencies. The hope is, you know, they can take on the bigger things that, you know, that allow them more challenging and fulfilling work and empower them to make decisions on their own and push the empowerment, you know, further um, toward the work in the organization. So, okay. Now, Patrick's again asked a good, another good, an interesting question. He said, did you also identify the key leadership behaviours you wanted to see manifested for each part of your model? Um, I think the leadership behaviours will come out of practising those skills. What you, they will, the right, if you practise the skills you've got in the green, then the leadership behaviours are going to start to come from practising those skills. Is that, is that where your mind's at or...? Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's the hope. I mean, obviously, there's examples of each of those that, you know, so we marry this along with a, there's some competency models that we're putting in, you know, to, to uh, team development, employee development that go into more the, the what does that behavior look like? But these are the key patterns that will drive um, the right behaviors for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it's what I, again, what I like about this model and whether you use the Institute or not is not why I'm saying this, but you can tell people to exhibit behaviours and these are the behaviours we want to, want to see from you, or you can give them patterns that they must practice and through practising those patterns, the behaviours will, that's the, that's the outcome of practising the pattern. And yeah. I think it's a, um, you know, telling people to do things generally doesn't work. Uh, but giving people patterns to practice when they know the long term, the chances of those behaviors becoming obvious, are uh, your chances go up. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think I agree with that. And I also think that you become more flexible and adaptable by, you know, improving that after through the plan, do, check, act. So once you get those patterns down, the behaviors that are, are, are needed today need to evolve as you move, you know, five years from now, those behaviors will likely need to change if they are fully developed or developing in this this with all the patterns they'll be able to be flexible and malleable to whatever challenges are in front of them down the road so you're you, you know you, you create a um or they're creating a, a way to solve their own issues they won't need to go through this again they just need to keep practicing all those which the, the appropriate pattern to you know to address any obstacles that they run into so yeah so you would be suggesting that if we had these capabilities embedded that these patterns will provide then you can take a group of people pretty much anywhere yeah 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 and then the other thing is as you you know you you uh, grow this cultivate this through a bigger portion of your organization then they start to uh, help new people that come in develop faster you don't have to go to a job relations training necessarily it will be no. embedded in the That's culture right. and then That's they'll right teach them that pattern so that's right it almost as if you have this embedded as new people come in it'll just be the way new hampshire industries is correct yeah a, a number of people are asking questions about management in the organization just let me assure you john is the president and and yeah. uh it cascades down from john which is you know i don't i haven't met many presidents who have thinking and commitment like john does so that just uh covers that one so we haven't got much time left, but just uh, you mentioned people-centric about 10 or 15 minutes ago. Um, 
it is very people centric and we know that the world and the way people are has changed a lot in the last two years. What's been, and we've had a question from Elizabeth Bennett's about, you know, what's, how's COVID impacted all this? So can you just talk a little bit about that? You know, this model, you, you did you give birth to this before um, COVID started or not? I can't remember. It, it was um, before, um, but I've, it's been refined through COVID. Let me, yes. it, it's the need to, yeah, yeah, just tell us a bit about that, that refinement. Yeah, so, like. so as like everyone, we're, you know, we're struggling uh, with hiring enough um, people and good people. Um, but I, I'm always been a proponent of people centric. Uh, I believe in, in that, you know, aspire to be um, much like what Toyota thinks, you know, I like, there's a statement that Toyota used that really stuck with me. It's in the Toyota way. And it was an answer from one of the Japanese executives from Toyota that they asked him how many um, industrial engineers they had. And he said, 2000 plus industrial engineers, because everybody on my, in my company is an industrial engineer. And that really stuck with me prior to um, during COVID. And I, I see it here. We need to unlock the value of the people in our company. We need to, they need to be um, voluntarily giving, you know, of themselves. You can't pull it out of people. They need to volunteer it. And the only way you do that is to, to create a culture of trust and develop people that will treat people with respect. And I mean, this is, it was kind of all built around that. And it just, I wouldn't say COVID made it um, any harder. It, 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 the remoteness made it harder, but we were able to keep moving. It was just, I think access to training wasn't as good and things like that have made an impact. But if anything, COVID's made me more aware of the need to unlock the value of people um, by doing something like this isn't the only pattern or the only model that will work, but it's the one that will work here. Yeah, sure. Um, so Eric Kenworth, thanks. Eric Kenworth asked the question, can we hear what a true to life example of this model looks like? <laughs> well, it is true to life. Tell where are you at right now with applying this model? You've, I know you've covered some of these skills that are listed there. Where are you at right now? So we have um, four teams of people that have gone through varying levels of um, training. They've all had the improvement kata training and the coaching kata training. Um, however, some of them have read the TWI book on job relations and job instruction and, and more informal training. Um, and we're practicing it as, um, and, and what we've seen is over the last five months of really applying um, the patterns as much as we can with the leaders, we've seen a market improvement in, in you know, throughput, productivity, morale, everything. And there's, there's a lot of, um, you know, I can share more detail if anybody wanted to reach out, you know, I can share more detail on my experience, but it, needless to say, it's, a, and it's nothing to do with me. This is all them. You got to get the, truly the credit is they've grabbed it. They're using the patterns and they're seeing the value. And now they're getting more and more motivated to apply it you know, yeah. to take out more obstacles. So it's not just improvement kata, but... Um, no, but it, but that but doing the improvement kata, coaching kata, they'll have developed the coaching, some coaching skills, which are top and bottom. Yeah. They will have developed plan, do, check, act skills because it's built on science. The improvement kata helps develop scientific thinking, which is fundamentally based on plan, do, check, act. Mm -hmm. uh, out of that, they will have started to pick up some problem-solving skills because there's definitely overlap between... Um, the scientific thinking pattern in continuous improvement and problem solving, they have the same roots. So, yep. so this is a, you know, don't, one of the reasons I asked John to speak was not because he's come up with a good model, was because he's actually applying it in his organisation as well. Let me assure you that they're on the road to that. And I'm pretty sure is it that in terms of formal training, job relations is next in the queue. Is that, is that where yeah. you're at, John? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's okay. correct. I would say one thing about the model too, Oscar, that's important um, is I view these patterns as um, almost a tool for different issues. So like if you take the improvement kata, that's going somewhere you've never been before. You're trying to get somewhere you don't know the path. You don't, job relations is about the, the, the tool to help you get, you know, deal with issues with your people or improve performance for your people. Problem solving is getting back to a known condition, right? You're solving an issue. And so you can apply these all the same, they're all for the same purpose, but to go a different place. Yes, um, yes. 
in many ways, the fundamental thing that's underlying behind there is common, the context varies depending on what the issue is the leader's facing this five minutes. Correct. Yeah. John, our time's up. And once again, uh, I really appreciate you putting, uh, putting aside the time. I love talking to you because I know that uh, you're speaking from experience. Uh, it is a model, but I know where you're at in terms of your application of it. And your uh, commitment to it as a president of a company is extremely impressive. So really appreciate your time. Thank you. And, Thank you, Oscar. Your, and everyone else who joined, thanks very, very much for joining. And John did say he was he could be contacted. Uh, those probably the easiest thing to do, anyone who wants to email Lean Frontiers and ask them for John's email address or ask them for mine and I will pass uh, John's email address on and he loves talking about this because uh, he believes it. So thanks everyone and John really appreciate it. Have Thank a good you. Afternoon. Thanks everyone. Thank you Oscar.